The original inspiration for the sermon, which came from God, was flawless. But by the time the sermon is channeled through a human vessel, it is subject, as we have already discussed, to error and to the flaws and the incapabilities of humanity. The gifts of healing, I repeat, are what God does through us. We'll discuss this in more detail in probably the end of this tape or the next tape. Let us go on to the gift of faith itself. The gift of faith is what God does without us. And because it is the operation of the Spirit without us, it is flawless. It is perfect. God can sweep into a congregation and in seconds, in minutes, hundreds can become healed, wonderfully and gloriously healed. Have you ever stepped out on a clear night and looked at the vast expanse of the universe, all the celestial bodies that hang there against the backdrop of blue velvet? God did all of that without us. Have you ever watched lightning streak through black stormy clouds? Have you ever heard thunder clap and cause the earth to tremble? God did all of that without us. Have you ever watched the tide? Have you ever watched it or felt it come rolling in at your feet on the shores of the Pacific or the Atlantic? God did all of that without us. What He has done is flawless. What He does among us is flawless. God help us to step out of the way, to step aside as it were, to acquiesce to Him. I learned a long time ago, you will never be able to compete with Jesus. You will never do it as well as He does it. No matter how oratorical you are, no matter how vast your vocabulary, no matter how talented, no matter how much you might be able to act or whatever, you will never do it as well as the Spirit of Jesus. You will never upstage Him. You will never be able to compete with Him. So my advice to you is that when He moves in, let Him do what He wants to do as a man of God, as a minister. I have learned that when the Holy Ghost falls, as we say, I simply step aside, forget my plans, and begin to walk through the crowd and minister and follow after Him as it were and help Him to do what He wants to do among the people for that particular service or that particular hour. Several years ago, by several I mean it's probably ten years ago now, there was at that point in my life a mole that began to form on the side of my neck just under my shirt collar. This mole was an ugly dark brown and it grew with rapidity until the inflamed area around it was the size of a silver dollar. Pastoring at the time, wearing white shirts, making hospital calls, wearing neckties, at the end of the day when I would come in, I would take my tie off and open my shirt and this whole thing would become inflamed and it was growing. That is a very dangerous sign and there was a little fear that tried to grip me. And way back here in the back of your head where there is no faith at all, where there is just reasoning and logic, I began to, with great speed of thought, begin to think, what am I going to do? I don't have insurance. I can't afford insurance. I'll have to go as an outpatient. I'll have to find a clinic. I, I just began to think about all of these things that you can think about in our particular society and really reached no conclusive answer to any of the things that were racing through my mind. But one night when I came home, at the end of a day's work of pastoring, I took the tie off and opened the collar and took the shirt off. I was exhausted. And I stood in my own bathroom looking into the mirror above the lavatory. And I simply looked at that ugly growth. And I took these fingers of my right hand and I placed them upon the growth and I simply said, I curse you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I took my fingers away, went to my bedroom and fell into bed in exhausted sleep. But in the morning when I awakened, I walked back into that same bathroom and looked into that same mirror 
And sometime between the moment of the cursing and this moment that I was now standing looking at it again, that growth, that mole had totally dried up. I reached my fingers up. There was an excitement that began to rise in me. I reached with my fingers and touched it, and that entire growth fell off in my hand. It was then that I understood that I had a hold of something that was so powerful, more powerful than anything I had ever known. I knew I had a hold of something that if I could ever transmit it, I would be able to reach the masses. I would bring hope to the cripple. I would bring healing to the diseased. And I knew it was all bound up in a name called Jesus, faith in His Word, believing literally what He had said, believing the exampleship of demonstration that is so profoundly written throughout the Gospels and even throughout the epistles, recorded for us. Recorded for what? Recorded for you and me to believe and to go out and to begin to apply, to begin to exact, to begin to demonstrate. These examples were left for our admonition and instruction it is the will of God for us to take this authority in our hands and to take it out and to demonstrate it to this present world that is so desperately in need. I want to say that in the last couple of years, I've seen now more than 10 people just simply get out of wheelchairs. Most of them I have never gone near. They have simply been touched by the gift of faith and they have simply stood to their feet or leaped to their feet and begin to walk. There was one woman in particular. I had my back turned to the audience. I was praying with someone in the altar to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Suddenly, above all the worship, I could hear someone screaming, I am healed, I am healed, I am healed. I turned around and there was a woman who had stood out of her wheelchair and she came walking down the aisle toward the front with her hands in the air, tears streaming literally down her face, uh, screaming, I am healed. God has healed me. I am healed. She walked out of that conference pushing her own wheelchair, healed by the mighty hand of God through the gift of faith. I did not uncork a bottle of oil. I did not lay my hands upon her. God doesn't really need me to do that. He is all sufficient. And when a soul's faith reaches out and touches God in this dimension of the gift of faith, miracles can happen. People suddenly can be healed as easily as they feel Him. About three years ago now, in the Louisiana camp meeting, there was a woman in a wheelchair. And there was a, a sister out of the congregation that went to pray for this woman in the wheelchair. And I was observing this from the platform as I was observing many things. I had prayed for many people. There were 10,000 people or more in that service that night. It would be impossible to call everybody out that had a need. Impossible to lay hands upon everyone. Impossible to have a healing line. There would be no way to help that many people. And you might say that at least a third of them would come for some kind of healing or some kind of laying out of hands or some kind of blessing from the hands of the ministry. It would be impossible. You'd be there all night, all day, trying to minister and become exhausted and probably be totally depleted of strength and unable to carry on toward the end of such a prayer line. But the gift of faith, God without us, God doing His thing among the people, is totally unlimited. It has no limitation at all. And so I released in my way of doing things and the knowledge I have of these things, I released the gift of faith among the people. And I was praying and worshiping God and simply concentrating upon Him and the moving of His Spirit in that service. Suddenly, I opened my eyes and was watching in this woman's direction. Suddenly, the woman in the wheelchair leaped out of the wheelchair, grabbed the sister that had been praying for her, threw her in the wheelchair, and began to push her down the aisle. It was one of the most glorious things that I have ever witnessed in the years of my own personal ministry. I pray to God that you will see like miracles and that I will see more and more and more.